you know, the the increase to the PPI, I mean, we, we were saying all along it's going to be higher because, you know, it's the, the, the increase is not because of actual growth in the economy, but it's just inflationary costs. Um, and you could see that, you know, with the, the core PPI. I mean, that, that just kind of solved the riddle, if you will. You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. And welcome. You are listening to watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz. Hey, we're almost at mid-March here. In fact, we are at mid-March give or take a day. We just got uh, exciting uh, news on the PPI increase. And what a shocker. Turns out inflation is not so transitory. What is transitory is their sound bites and their explanations as to why inflation is transitory. But Ed Seidel is here with us to uh, to explore and understand exactly what's going on here. Ed? Great to have you back on the show. So, no surprise for having me. Hey, of course, no surprises on this uh, PPI uh, number, is there? No, no. I, I anybody who was acting shocked, just you know, they, they're not paying attention. Um, you know the the increase to the PPI. I, we we were saying all along it's going to be higher because you know it's the, the the increase is not because of actual growth in the economy, but it's just inflationary costs. Um, and you could see that you know with the the core PPI. I mean that that just kind of solved the riddle, if you will. Oh yeah. Hey, so looking at this thing. Um, <laughs> oh, excuse me. Sure, sure. Looking at the the numbers here and everything else. Um, <laughs> you know. Look, airline pilots, they've gotten 40 to 60% increases. Flight attendants, 40 to 60% increases. I know they don't theoretically produce anything, but clearly, clearly uh, prices are going up. Yeah, you, you know, I mean, it, it's it's that old minimum wage argument, right? I mean, we have to continue to raise the minimum wage so people can, you know, survive and, you know, have in, increase their standard of living. But you know, that affects everything all the way across the board. And and that holds true. So we're, we're talking about, uh, you know, uh, airline, uh, the pilots and flight attendants, um, you know, as, as it relates to transportation. And then, you know, when we look at the, the Teamsters, you know, all of these things, you know, as re- wages increase, this is all inflationary. And this is really what's affecting the, the PPI. And honestly, Gary, I'm, I'm shocked. I'm, I'm shocked when I just heard today that, you know, they were within the Fed's target of that 2%, which is arbitrary, but that's topic for another day. Um, it, but it, it's just like the jobs numbers. Um, you know, they they inflate them and then they revise them down the words. Um, you know, you've got Powell who wants to, you know, have uh, uh, unemployment up. Um, and everyone's relating to what we're seeing right now, very similar to, to 2008, you know, but the, there's some major differences when we talk about inflation. Um, you know, number one, unemployment, right? It was in, I think it was, it was in the sevens. I, I, I want to say 7.3. I can't remember exactly what it was in 2008. Um, and, and now it's in the threes. But, you know, the big difference is the underemployed. Um, you know, if we add in that underemployed number, it's, you know, significant under uh, unemployment is actually significantly higher now than it was in, in 08. But the big factor is inflation. And so, you know, when the feds are, it, it seems like th- that old adage, right? There's lies, there's damn lies and there's statistics. So, so everyone's kind of adding in the numbers that they want to be able to prove their point instead of looking at the, the overall picture and, um, and if you look at the overall picture, the the math, it just, uh, you know, it continues not to work. Yeah, exactly. And uh, who do they think they're kidding? Uh, that's what I'd like to know. But uh, yeah. obviously they think you're kid- they're kidding you and me, right? Yeah. And, you know, I was just saying the other day that the disparity between the haves and the have nots or, you know, the Main Street and, and Wall Street, that gap is getting bigger and bigger. I was just looking at... Uh, a, a survey that came out, it said uh, uh, that 
the loans on 401ks, they have increased 30%. Sure. Uh, and, and, and the main, for the, in the survey, they, the, there was the top five things, right? But the top two, the number one reason people have been taking out loans on 401ks was to prevent foreclosure, right? The number two was to cover medical bills so that they could maintain treatment. And, and so this goes back to, you know, the stats that came out last October that said that 49% of Americans at the end of every month, there's not enough money. So they're living on credit cards. And, you know, we're, we've are we hit all-time um, debt highs as far as credit cards. I think now the average credit card rate is is over 24%. I think it's like 24.6% now. Um, average, right? So some are higher, some are a little bit lower, but that's the average. And the average household debt is over $150,000. So when people talk about, you know, the economy is strong and, you know, the PPI numbers, you, you really have to look at what's really going on in the world around us that say, yeah, you know, that's it's not accurate. Definitely not accurate. And we know this uh, for sure. Hey, we see that, uh, you know, personal income is lagging uh, yeah. debt in the GDP numbers, right? Uh, Significantly, yep. yeah. By a long shot. Uh, how long can that go on for? Man, I, you know what? I, I, I think we're pretty close to that breaking point. Um, you know, we talked about this last year. You know, I've been talking about this debt bubble. Um, we're, we're at, we're so close to a point where, you know, at what point is no longer sustainable? Um, I, I heard today one of the the pundits on on one of the financial shows saying that I don't mean to be a, a perma bull, but if you look at all the numbers, this bull market is not you know uh, going to end anytime in the near future. Um, I, I think people are looking at what's going on in the market as far differently than what's going on, or as the same as what's going on in in real life. Um, there are so many families struggling. There is they're going to hit that wall. Um, and we saw this in, in 07 and 08 going into 09, where when people start hitting the wall, which means they have no money, they know that they're going to file for bankruptcy or whatever it is, they continue to run up you know, their debt, whether it's a home equity line of credit or credit cards or or whatever it is. And I, I think the way that it's going right now, based on the data that I'm seeing, it's very similar to what we saw in 08. And you know, that, again, that narrow window we have, I, I think it's it's closing rapidly. Um, I, you know, who knows whether it's this summer or next fall, but it's uh, um, it, it's closing. It's definitely closing. And like we say, how uh, how how much longer can it really happen? Yeah, and you know, I I continue to 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 look at all of the numbers, um, be, because you there's so much conflicting data. You know, there's so much white noise. You know, you you you, mm -hmm. you and when we're talking with clients, you know, educating them in in helping them understand that you know last year the the biggest rise you know in the indices was based on the Super Seven, Magnificent Seven, whatever you want to call it, and then it was you know the Fabulous Four, and and when we're looking at it this year, it's 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 really three companies. You, you've got uh, Nvidia. I think yesterday it hit well into the nines, uh, nine hundred dollars per share. <clears throat> you've got Meta and Amazon that are really propping everything up, and and so now when you start to see this euphoric feeling, uh, oh my gosh, I'm I'm going to miss out. And, um, you know, hey, if you have any cash sitting on the sidelines, now is the time to get in be before you miss out. Uh, you know, that's when you start really pulling back. That's when you really start need to be a contrarian saying, ah, you know what? Um, I, there, there's something else bigger afoot. I don't think between now and the election, um, barring some unforeseen Incident, you know that "quote unquote" black swan event, whether it's China, Taiwan, um, God forbid, a Gaza type incident here in the Banking U.S. collapse, banking collapse. I mean, we're banking collapse. You bank just collapse, read my notes. Right? Yes, um, because we're starting to see those right. Um, banking, commercial loans. Uh, I saw a report uh, Monday or Tuesday of this week, and it said nearly ten percent of all commercial loans are either past 30 days or have engaged into some special servicing agreement with the lenders. I mean, think about that. I mean, th those are that that's a big number. So, you know, you've got all of the these loans that are coming due um and now with as that credit continues to tighten, um 
you know, these borrowers, they're not going to be able to qualify like they did. And so they're going to have to pay a higher rate. And now with the the majority of these loans, um, uh, where, where they're, um, my mind just went blank, where, you know, they, yeah. uh, they're not on the hook anymore. Um, I, they could just walk away and, and be free and clear. I, you know, I think we're going to start seeing more and more of that, and that's going to the dominoes will continue to fall off. Yeah, and the dominoes are falling now, right? Uh, so again, how much longer can it really continue? You know, I I don't know. I I think it's going to be short lived. Um, a recourse. That's what I was talking about. So you know, these recourse and non recourse loans where they they don't have to go after them, and and I think as these, I mean, we just saw with BlackRock, right? BlackRock. They had a couple non-recourse loans on a couple buildings, and they walked away. They walked. Some of the, the world's largest REITs. I mean, they're everyone. So these are the top of the food chain, and they're walking away from their obligations. So imagine what Main Street is is going to start doing. Yeah. I can't even begin to think here. It's it's scary, isn't it? It, it is. It is. And, and uh, I don't, you know, I, I try to look at, uh, you know, not glass half full or half empty. I'm, you know, I'm just always happy to just have a glass, right? Um, and, and, and if we look at this the right way with all the bad news that's coming out, if you're positioned properly, you know, when, when things kind of flip upside down as they always do, because it's cyclical, you know, there, there's an opportunity to, to do well. Um, but my fear is, so many people have been talked into, we got to get all the way in. Let's go all in on the market right now. And um, I, I think there's going to be a, a, a huge shift in, in wealth or a continual shift in wealth, I should say. All right. So, hey, when Powell was uh, giving his uh, speech to Congress, he also mentioned that there were going to be more bank failures. Did you catch that? I did. <laughs> I did. Yes. Yep. So when I um, of it, if he's even saying it, then we got a problem, Houston. Well, absolutely. And, you know, Jamie Dimon originally said, we're, we're fine. There's nothing to worry about. And he came out at the end of last year and said he's concerned and, and brought it up uh, in January of this year. When Powell says it, if you, there's a couple rating services that actually rate banks. I mean, you go in and you look at the number of banks that have a uh, uh, C, D, or E rating, because they don't have an F, right? It's C, D, or, or E. Um, it is significantly higher than it was a year ago, and it's more than double than it was, you know, even, even three years ago. So that's telling the the dark side of the story, where everything is continuing to, to head. And the fact that Powell actually said it on Right, with TV. television or yeah, uh, that you, you know it's coming down the pike, right? Because he wouldn't even admit to inflation; everything was transitory until he's like, "Oh, wait a minute, I got to back out of it." So that that kind of tells that's a sign of things to come. And now he's saying uh, you shouldn't be demonizing uh, Trump enthusiasts or Trump supporters too. I mean, it's a little strange, isn't it? <clears throat> Yeah, you know, I I didn't. Um, I, I'm still trying to figure that out. Is he saying that because um, hey, uh, uh, I, I need to make sure I, I want to keep my job, and he thinks that you know the election is going to go one way um, or versus the other? Because that I thought that that was so misplaced. I I, I just thought that that was a very odd comment or statement to make. Didn't you? Yeah, he hasn't exactly been a uh, friend of the Republican Party. And we're not talking politics here. I'm just saying, what does it mean? And I guess he sees the handwriting on the wall, doesn't he? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I mean, w without a doubt. Uh, and I think a lot of people are truly getting fed up with the lip service. And, you know, um, it, because they're feeling the pain every day. Every time they get their check, it's not enough. Um, and you know, healthcare costs are going up. I mean, look at the cost of insurance. Did, did you see that auto insurance again? Another quarter in a row. Car yeah. insurance went up twenty percent. Tell me about it. I know, man. I just got my bill, and you know, I have the most expensive <laughs> car there is to insure, and I'm in the most expensive state for car insurance, Florida. And man, it's like uh, it's crazy. But what are you supposed to do? Lower your well. You got the double deductibles. Yeah, you got the double whammy with homeowners insurance going through the roof mm -hmm. down there, too, you know. And yeah. oh. this is 
Yeah. This is telling that. us when you start seeing homeowners insurance and um, uh, car insurance, you know, that property and casualty go up as high as it is. Uh, you know, there's what that's saying is the cost of materials, you know, to, to rebuild these homes. You know, everything is is inflationary. So they know what's really going on because it's it's being felt by, you know, everyday folks like you and me. Yeah. Isn't that the truth, man? All right. So now the big question, Ed, and this is why you get the big bucks. What are you supposed to do? Gold, Bitcoin? Uh, you know, Will Rogers, I've, I've said this uh, before, always said invest in inflation. It's the only thing going up, right? That's right. That's right. I, you know, I do love hard assets. Um, you know, gold, gold stocks, gold mining stocks, but the actual physical, um, you know, precious metals. I'd get, I've been a fan of, I have for, for 30 plus years, um, you know, real estate, residential, um, you know, cause rents continue to go up, you know, that's, that's a very, very tough market to buy into right now. So, you know, having those assets, I, I really still don't like commercial markets and won't for a long time as it relates to, to real estate, but, you know, be smart, uh, position yourself, have a diversified portfolio. Um, and the closer you get to the election, boy, I'll tell you what, man, I, I would start taking chips off the table and, and, you know, ride the storm out. And when things get a little bit lower, that's, that's when you make your money, um, is, is buying back in on, hate to say on the dips, cause that is going to underestimate it. But, you know, I think that's really what's going to happen no matter who's elected in, in November. Yeah. I could not agree with you more. And, uh, hey, what's your take on Bitcoin? Uh, you believer? Hi, all right. So full disclosure, I own uh, Bitcoins uh, and Ethereum. Um, and I've always looked at it more as uh, I'm going to catch a lot of flack for this. I have always looked at it more as a, a lottery ticket. OK, um, you know, we being able to get in at an early time, um, but buying in now, um, I it, it, it's kind of like NVIDIA. Right. You know, are how close are we to the top? I mean, when when we go from, you know, 11,000 to I, I didn't see what it was today, but I know it hit close to 73,000. Um, it, it, right now, it's estimated that, you know, it's going to hit 100,000. So is there enough uh, um, this, yeah, enough juice for the squeeze between now and then? Uh, normally, I would probably be a believer, except for the fact that you've got United States buying into it. You've got, you know, these major institutions like um, at JP Morgan, uh, Wells Fargo, a lot of these major banks are buying into Bitcoin. So that's telling me that, you know, it's probably going to be a little bit more regulated and it could wind up being another fiat currency like the US dollar. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> it's a little bit different because in theory, actually, in fact, until they figure out another way, the, the quantity of Bitcoin in the world is fixed. And that is the difference between a dollar and a Bitcoin. And, um, you know, do I think it's a little out of hand? Yeah, but it's trading at record levels. It's over 70,000, down a little bit today on the March 14th, down 2%, big deal. But it made a new high. Um, mm -hmm. You know, got to see it break 75,000. If, th if it breaks 75,000, I think uh, it's a load up the... Uh, load up the digital wallet moment. You, you know what? I agree. I think 75 is, if if that's the breakthrough, I, I think we could see another parabolic, you know, increase. And, in, you know, I, I don't think 100,000 is is out of range by by any stretch. Um, you know, as far as buys, I, I'm kind of looking at Bitcoin and Ethereum as the difference between gold and silver, right? Um, you know, Ethereum is, is a little bit... Uh, um, Financially more palatable for for people to buy into, um, and and I think that Ethereum is going to go along with it. But by without a doubt, uh, Bitcoin is the standard. It really is. But I did hear rumors that they, you know, instead of it being finite, that they were going to, you know, um, increase the amount of coins. So I, I you know, yeah, I, I read that too, but it's really not possible to do without the consent of all the nodes. Or oh, is that what it, is that how it yeah. works? Okay. Yeah, so I am really not that not. familiar as you are. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, interesting times. Eddie, tell us, where do we find you? How do we connect with you? 
egsifinancial.com. That is the best place to find us. You've got all of our contact information, our our podcasts, uh, our interviews like like this. They're they're all on our website. And um, yeah, so th- thank you very much. Hey, you got a question for Ed or myself? KL at carryletz.com. Emails are welcome. And uh, while you're at our site, financialsurvivalnetwork.com, sign up for your free newsletter. Ed, appreciate you coming on, and we'll talk to you again soon. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.